Hey everyone, I'm Mike from theparkprodigy.com and on today's video, we're gonna answer the question, should you rope drop Star Wars Rise of the Resistance? Now, of course, this is one of the most popular rides in all of Walt Disney World. And of course, there have been some major changes to the Walt Disney World system over these past couple years and that will have an impact on rope dropping for sure. So we wanted to make sure to create this video if you are in the process of planning a Walt Disney World trip. Specifically, if you're in the process of trying to figure out what is the best way to get on Rise of the Resistance, you're gonna wanna make sure to watch this video through the end because we're gonna include some numbers, give you some tips and tricks, everything that we think you need to know to make sure you are as prepared as possible for your next Disney trip. I'm excited for this video, let's go get started. Thank you all so much for checking out this video. If you are in the process of planning a Walt Disney World trip and it seems like this, these are the type of videos that you will need to be as prepared as possible, be sure to go and subscribe to our channel so you get more great videos like this as we drop them. Now, speaking of dropping, we're gonna drop over to Star Wars Rise of the Resistance and we're gonna take a look at if you should or should not rope drop like we said. Now, Rise of the Resistance is one of the most popular attractions in all of Orlando, not just over at Walt Disney World. Now, of course, one of the reasons why so many guests love this ride is because it is a great experience for Star Wars fans and, of course, non-Star Wars fans alike. Now, the incredible ride has been at the top of most theme park enthusiasts' bucket list for many reasons, but this trackless Star Wars-themed ride is full of larger-than-life imagineering, and you truly feel like you are escaping from the First Order in a galaxy far, far away. Now, of course, with the popularity comes those wait times, and that's exactly what we're going to break down in this video. How exactly should you tackle Star Wars Rise of the Resistance? Is there a better time to go? Is rope dropping the answer? So very, very quickly, we're going to go over exactly what is rope dropping. Now, rope dropping is a popular technique to get into the theme parks right at park open to rush to the popular attraction before too many guests get into the parks. Now, this usually includes getting to the theme parks in at least a half hour early and waiting outside the theme parks before they even open up. Now, a little bit before the park opening, Disney will allow you to come into the park. However, there will be kind of be like a rope or uh, yeah, actually used to work in Disney. We never had a rope. It would just be cast members with their arms kind of, you know, out <laughs> making sure that no guest walked by. Um, that is rope dropping. Then, of course, at park open rope drop everyone gets to go to their favorite ride now although you cannot run most guests usually power walk to their favorite ride now you're probably thinking mike this is pretty obvious like of course this is going to help me during my disney world trip but the problem is there's a lot of moving parts when trying to figure out if you should rope drop specifically for rise um and one of the main reasons is there have been some major changes at Walt Disney World over these past few years that are going to impact rope dropping. So let's go over the importance of these new rules. Number one, this is probably the biggest on-site guests are given an early park entry into the Disney theme parks, and that's every single Disney theme park. So yes, if you're staying at an on-site Disney World resort, you will get into any of the Disney theme parks a half hour before everyone else. Moving on to number two, and that is the Disney Genie, specifically for Rise of the Resistance. The Disney Genie Premium Rides will open up again for on-site Disney World guests at 7 a.m., and they will open up for off-site Disney World guests at park opening. So you guys can already see, you know, unfortunately, if you're staying off-site at an off-site Disney World hotel, you are at a bit of a disadvantage, but again, just stick around to the end because we're going to try to break down everything you could do to make sure that you do take advantage of low wait times. And last but not least on the new Disney changes, we do have park hopping. Now, park hopping, of course, is not a new thing. However, in this situation, you cannot park hop till 2 p.m. And we're trying to figure out, you know, hey, is that advantage, disadvantage to wait times? But what we're the reason why we're putting it on this list is because you do have to keep in mind that you might not be able to, let's say, wait until later on in, in the night. If you're park hopping, you're going to have to get on the ride, you know, before 2 o'clock or whatever time after 2 o'clock you plan to go over to that other park. So it's important to keep that in mind. Okay, so with that being said, should you rope drop? And we're going to try to break down the numbers at this point. So we went and we looked at a bunch of, you know, wait time data. And where this gets complicated and just it's important to keep in mind the time of year that you're visiting. Okay. Now, typically, we actually have a crowd calendar on our website, and we pretty much break it down by, you know, low crowds, medium crowds, heavy crowds. What I will say is that a, a lot of the data that we're looking at in this video is like worst case scenario, but of course, because that's when this video really is the most important, when crowds are at their heaviest. And what we have found is that when crowds are at their heaviest, 
there is going to be an advantage to rope dropping. Specifically, there is an advantage if you're staying in an on-site resort. We do see, you know, I would say maybe a savings of about 30 minutes, 40 minutes if you're, you know, the, we're basing that off of the rest of the day. So you do want to rope drop. I would say, though, you know, make sure you're one of the first families in the park. With that being said, if you're staying in an off-site resort, again, we still see the advantage, you know, if you, but you, you have to be really one of the first now off-site families in the park. On-site guests get in 30 minutes before, you gotta make sure that you are waiting online to get in exactly when the park opens, and you'll see. We have about an hour window, long story short, where you can take advantage of the rope drop. You know, you have about an hour window, and that's including the extra half hour. So I would say you have about a half hour from regular park opening where you need to be on this line. Now, the crazy thing that I actually was not expecting is there is another time of the day when we do start to see that the Rise of the Resistance lines will go down, and that's at about 5 or 6 o'clock at night. However, like I said, the important thing to keep in mind is if you are park hopping, you're not going to be in the park at 5 or 6 o'clock at night, most likely. So, you know, again, in that situation, make sure that you're showing up early, make sure that you're one of the first families in the park for the rope drop. Now, while I was looking through all this data, on the flip side, one of the things that I actually found, uh, it, it reminded me a lot of Hagrid's Magical Creatures over at Universal, meaning that it, the wait times after that point, like after the peak time, were pretty consistent. And what I mean by that is, you know, at that point, once you hit the peak hours, you know, you'll see for the day, like, that's it. I'm not, you know, and I guess what I'm trying to say is, if the peak hour for that day is like 156 minutes, you know, after that first golden hour in the morning, then for the most part, wait times are pretty much going to stay at that level. Like we pretty much peaked out. Now, what I found is that they'll go up about 20 to 25 minutes from that peak level. So at that point, it's you're pretty consistent. I would just say go in and whatever time works best for you, you know, during the peak hours, just go in. If, you know, saving time is not the most important thing, I, the, I think this is actually pretty helpful because you won't stress out. Like, that's it, you're gonna, you're, you're gonna, you know, 20, 25 minutes, you can always make that up later on in the day, in my opinion. You know, it's not a, it's not as big a difference of, you know, let's say over at Hagrid's, where for early park admission, you could potentially only wait a half hour. But if you miss early park admission, you know, at that point, it's going up to, you know, hour and a half, two hours. So there's like an hour and a half spread. Th that's not the case with Rise of the Resistance. It's consistent. And I actually think that helps a lot of families, even though it is gonna be a long wait time. For the majority, a lot of the wait times that we saw, especially during peak season, were at, you know, at 98, 120 minutes, 150 minutes, um, depending on the day that you're visiting. So from the numbers, like we said, you have that about that, that golden hour in the morning, including the early half hour for on-site resort guests that you do want to make sure that you are on this line. It's still going to be a decent um, wait time. However, you are going to save yourself a decent amount of time. And then, of course, if you miss that golden hour, if you're good with consistency for a long wait time throughout the day, just hit it between 9 to 4 or 5 o'clock at night. If you're hoping that wait times will come off again, then wait 5 or 6 o'clock at night. We typically do see wait times come off a little bit, and you can save yourself a little bit more time. Okay, so just as a bonus to the video, we're going to just break down, of course, if maybe I didn't sell you already, some of the pros and cons of rope dropping. And the reason why we wanted to do this was specifically, I don't want to get um, anyone discouraged if maybe you're staying in an off-site Disney Resort, there are still some great benefits to rope dropping, and we just wanted to make sure it broke both of them down for Disney on-site and Disney off-site resort guests. And of course, we're going to start with the pros of rope dropping, the pros of rope dropping for regular park guests staying in an off-site Disney Resort. And of course, you could potentially have a lower than normal wait time. That is first and foremost, the most obvious. Second is you can have access to the parks with very little people in it. And you can experience a lot of the Disney magic with a, you know, the, the Disney parks are just a little bit more magical when there's less people in them. Third, let's say that you get to the park and you decide, yeah, you want to know what? We are going to wait. We're not going to rope drop rise. We're just going to go on and we're going to come back at six o'clock. Hey, you still have access to all the other Disney uh, theme park rides at an early hour with little wait times. Number four, if you do come and you do rope drop and you're staying in an off-site Disney World Resort, hey, you don't have to pay for the Disney Genie Plus Premium, so you could save yourself a couple bucks that way. And of course, moving over to my on-site Disney World Resort guest, the pros of rope dropping, well, it's an extra half hour early and it's only for on-site resort guests, so take advantage of it. You really have the theme park to yourself, whether it be over at Rise of the Resistance or again, any of the other 
Disney World Resort rides, you're gonna get some very, very low wait times. Now, of course, moving over to the cons, because there are some cons to rope dropping. There is a lot that goes into this. And again, you know, it doesn't matter if this is for on-site resort guests or off-site resort guests, the cons are gonna be pretty similar. And first and foremost, you have to get up at least two hours before the park opens to make sure that you have enough time to get over, you know, get everyone ready and get over to the parks. Moving over to number two, we still recommend getting to the park at least an hour before whatever, if it's the extra half hour early or the regular park opening, we still recommend getting to the parks an hour before. So again, you know, this isn't a commitment. This is an early morning. You want to have enough time to get through security. You want to have enough time to really make sure that you are one of the first families online, like we keep saying. So again, you got to commit, you got to get up early, you got to be over to the parks. Number three, and this is one that people might not think about, but at that initial stage where everyone is, you know, getting ready to power walk over to their favorite ride, there's going to be a large crowd. So if crowds are not your thing, um, I mean, to be honest with you, crowds are not your thing. I don't know if Disney World is going to be your thing because there might be crowds everywhere in Walt Disney World. However, that is a con of rope dropping that we wanted to mention. And last but not least, it is important for us to mention that Rise the Resistance is by far one of the most inconsistent um, rides at Walt Disney World. What we mean when I say that is that the, for some reason this ride, because it, I guess it's because the technology is so new, it's constantly breaking down, constantly breaking down. So unfortunately, you know, sometimes what we will find is that you might go over to Rise to rope drop, but the ride is down. Or, you know, during the day, you might wait until five or six o'clock to take advantage of, you know, those little pulled back wait times, but the ride is down. And, you know, it could be frustrating and that's one of the cons. Um, you could end up, rope, you know, trying to rope drop Rise and then you might not even be able to, unfortunately. Okay, and so very, very quickly, some more tips and tricks before we let you guys go. Here are the tips and tricks to make sure that you get the most if you are going to rope drop at Rise the Resistance, and that is get to Hollywood Studios, like we said, an hour before park opening. Don't risk it. Make sure you are one of the first families online, like we keep saying. Number two, know exactly where to go when you get to the parks. Now, of course, you're gonna see, most likely there's gonna be a, a line of people power walking with you over to Star Wars so you could follow the line. I wouldn't, you know, I would do a little research beforehand, look up a Star Wars Galaxy's Edge map, look up a Hollywood Studios map, just know where you're going to make sure you're not wasting any time. Like we said, number three, be ready to power walk. Now, I don't know if you wanna dress up in 80s retro and <laughs> you know get your, your morning groove going, um, but, you are gonna be power walking, so make sure that you are aware of that, or if you don't wanna power walk, you don't have to, but everyone else will be, so it gives you the best advantage. Maybe you wanna start training from now. And last but not least, pay attention to the time of year that you're visiting. Like we said, this is very, very important. We put this video together for peak times. However, what we find is that, of course, during off-peak season and during the slower times of year, it is just gonna be easier to get on the most popular rides. You know, my biggest thing, and you could see from the cons, is that Disney really put together a system where it, it is a little difficult to plan your day around the, the, this most popular attraction. There's no getting around that. So if you don't get on Rise of the Resistance for rope dropping, like I said, you know, this video was really created as worst case scenario. However, if you're watching this video, this ride is obviously very important for you. And I'm a huge Star Wars fan, and this ride really, really does live up to the hype. And I really want to make sure that everyone gets on it. So all I would say is that I do think you have the best chance if you visit during the off time season in Disney. And there's nothing worse than I don't want you guys to come to Walt Disney World and not get on this ride. I just my my brutally honest opinion is I do think that gives you your best chance because you'll see with lower wait times you just have more flexibility. Um, and so that would be my last tip and trick if possible. However, if not, just be sure to you know follow the guidelines that we just laid out in this video. I think for a conclusion, should you rope drop Star Wars Rise of the Resistance? I would say yes, I can't see it hurting. Um, I, I honestly can't see it hurting unless you the rod is potentially down and you just can't rope drop it. However, I just always think that there's an advantage to getting to the park earlier because let's be real, I, I, if you've spoken with me on the phone, I've said this about early park admission that comes over at Universal with all of our tickets. The reality is most families will sleep in. Everyone's on vacation, right? And rightfully so, I love sleeping in. But that does give you the advantage if you do get up and go over to the parks for rope dropping. And like I said, we have that golden hour. So should you rope drop Star Wars Rise of the Resistance? I would say yes, it cannot hurt. I think that's all the time we have for this video. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you are in the process of planning a Disney World vacation and you do need a little additional help, be sure to go check out our website, theparkprodigy.com. We do have a bunch of free vacation planning tools. We have a bunch of discounted theme park tickets. Everything you need to be as prepared as possible for your next Walt Disney World trip. Thank you guys again so, so much for checking out this video. Until next time, I will talk to you soon.